wonder if all my bad decisions get accounted in the algorithm. No statistician could dissuade me from my bigger vision. I know my occupation's quite an unlikely place in this world to occupy and talk about upon a daily basis. Our information's predetermined by some biased business. We all in sermon to silicon that push our lovely neighbors. I'm done with paper chasing, think I'm on the bigger banquets. This that full circle, new wave, energy on a Tuesday. Turn a blue day to a bright hue, yellow with a smooth day in hair. Extra fruit, hey, the brand. You can't move me, the music is man. It's a con job, but this grand. I'm blessed with a great hand. Amongst many that stink, yeah, it took some hard work. Blind up, play a huge role. And they say that it don't, but they're feeding you fool's gold. And if I know one thing, the truth's home. Even if it's a tough thing to swallow, an even harder thing to hold, and truly know without a doubt while on the globe. And even though that seems inherent, it ain't always so apparent. Dangle carrot, you ain't always gonna get it. But don't worry, it's a pretty February. In a year with more to carry, and more days is yet to come. Under the sun, taking the ferry to the city. But the moment's extra pretty, like the people, like the idea that I keep inside my brain that isn't equal to the real world. All that stress ain't saving me, fiddle. I swear to God, I'm trying. Uh, they pushing the demons down my esophagus. Screaming the easy life, what I want all of ways. Praise way to holidays. Tell me that love is the answer just to boost this economy. But I'm more sell now, but I ain't following. I ain't a hollow man. I'm full of them fall winds. Take it all with a tall crane. And if you feel it, do it with me. And just sing with the song, say it all for what it is. What it is, what it is, what it is. It ain't all so big. So big, so big, so big, so big. Take it all for what it is. What it is, what it is, what it is. So bad. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? <laughs> it's Dearly me, beloved. SB, and this is Unsolicited, and another good Friday. <laughs> Yeah, I love these Fridays. Like I always say, it's been good since we, well, we started on Good Friday and it's been good ever since. I appreciate you all for being here and I hope that we have another Good Friday. <laughs> so listen, thank you guys. Make sure you're coming into the live. You give me the thumbs up. It's me, SB. This is SB Nation and this is Unsolicited. Remember, <laughs> you typically, typically don't ask for it you know, the information, but I give it to you anyway. It's unsolicited. So anyway, thank y'all. And tonight, this afternoon, we're talking about men. You only need one. Good women are everywhere. Now, Dearly I don't beloved. believe that. We got to talk about it because I truly believe that there are good women everywhere. But I'm going to tell y'all in a little bit what this all comes from. And why we decided to do a little separate show about it and what have you. And we're going to talk about it. And y'all always know how this goes. But about halfway through, I want to hear from you all, ladies and men. Um, because you know what? I didn't really think this was a thing, you know. But apparently it is. But anyway, guys, I'm going to share a little bit with you all. And then we're going to jump right into it. Because I have some things I want to share. First things first, thank you so much, guys, for you all going over to my channel, going over to SB Nation and picking up some SB gear with five stars. If you have not been there yet, make sure you drop by and just check it out. Check out the T-shirts, the sweatshirts, the long sleeves, the hats, the mugs, all those things. SB Nation, five stars. And be <laughs> five-star club. So when I see y'all walking down the street, I don't know exactly who you are. Now, listen. If y'all see some four stars on the street, it has nothing to do with SB Nation. It's not me. We had nothing to do with it. It's just somebody that forgot to do something. That's all. It's not five. We're five. Five stars. So if you go give a Google review, five stars. Not four and shaded a little bit. It's complete five. Y'all understand what I'm talking about. Thank you. But anyway, the next thing. Also, if I haven't already said it, y'all already know, I Choose You is back. All right. We're working on the commercial now. It is coming soon within the next few days. The I Choose You commercial of JR Wisdom is The Bachelor. Listen, ladies, single women, and I'm going to make sure I say this all the time. Single is without husband. 
single is without husband. Okay. It don't mean that your husband and you are estranged and y'all been away from each other for about 20 years. It means that you're not married. I need y'all to send me a message. Go over to SB show 2020 at Gmail and just give me a little message. Say, you know what? I'm kind of feeling JR wisdom. Can I, uh, can I be a part of I choose you? And I will definitely get back with you. But first, I want y'all to make sure y'all look at the commercial and hear what JR is saying he would like in his woman. So, you know, make sure that, you know, everybody's on the same page. But it's coming soon. The commercial is coming soon. I want y'all to hear that. Now, this is something I don't really do. But tomorrow, um, Modern Renaissance Man will be here, over here on my channel, guys. And he's going to be, we're going to be talking about everything, all things. Who knows what? He's going to be here tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern. And I want all of you. To join me and I'm going to make this announcement again If y'all don't know who Modern Renaissance Man is Go check out his channel, he got a variety channel Y'all, he doing everything You name it, he probably tell y'all how to Change some spark plugs, who knows But he's doing his thing and I want you all to come Join me tomorrow at 7pm Eastern Come join us, we'll be over here and we're talking about An array of things, I don't have just one thing I want to talk about everything, marriage included Brittany Griner uh, uh, Roe versus Way, All these things that we've been talking about we're going to touch on all of them and just have a good conversation. I'm going to begin to know him. I'm going to be sharing a little bit about myself with him. So make sure y'all tune in for that tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern. I will definitely appreciate that. And look here, the show hadn't even got started yet. And we over here with Black Man Unfiltered. Thank Dearly you so beloved. much, Black Man, for your $10 super chat. So guess what? You're going to kill two birds with one stone. But first, I'm going to read your comment and then we're going to get into the next part. He says, let's get it started right now, damn it. <laughs> you made me cuss. <laughs> Welcome to SB Church, <laughs> where the teaching is free, but the super chat and the gift shop money belongs to SB. <laughs> you are so funny. But guess what? You get the money line. Money line. I'm going to run it every time. Give me mine. Going up me. Thank you, black man. So what y'all understand then. So those of you who are here for the first time, the money line song comes with any super chat that is $9.99 and up. So what that does is I read the super chat, of course, but I also you also get the money line song for being a special supporter for that particular moment or day. Thank you so much for doing that. Now, super chats. We read all super chats. And if we for some reason overlooked your super chat, I'm apologizing. I'm apologizing in advance because we haven't been known to do that. Forgive us. But if we see them, we will definitely um, read those. And guess what, though? We have some nice moderators who keep us all in check and they make it sure that we read these things. And did I forget my co-host again? Oh, my God. Guys, let's say hello to my special and one and only Mr. Boss. Dearly beloved. Hey, Mr. Boss, how are you doing today? Thumbs up. He gave us a thumbs up, guys. Y'all think that's going to make him work harder? No, I tried to give him a kiss today. He pushed me away. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> talking junk. It was talking junk to me before this camera come on, came on. Yeah, I just want y'all to know. I just want y'all to know. Be talking junk in the background. That's all right. I know how to sneak, sneak this. If I got him. But anyway, now we're going to get to, we're going to get to the comic section, the comment section and say hello to a few people. Thank you guys for being here. But let's go back to the top. Stephen Day. I think I saw you first one in here. Thank you so much for all your support. Brittany B, I'm so glad you're here. Lady Nava, hello, hello, hello. I'm so glad you got to make it to the beginning of the show. It's so good to see you. I think I saw Riding the Six. It's good to see you also, Black Men. Hello, hello, hello. Neo Moses, Moses, thank you. Good to see you. I'm glad that you're here. Eugene Steele, Mr. Steele, Dr. Steele. It's good to see you. Thank you for being here. M. Mills, it's very good to see you. Cat student number one. Hey, how are you? Thank you for being here. This is the first time I'm seeing you here. Welcome. And you definitely are welcome here at SB Nation. And I know we're going to have a good show. And listen, make sure you tune in. Um, King Thanos. Oh, the Thanos theory. Excuse me. Hello, sir. How are you? <laughs> I seen you little podcast. How are you, sir? I hope you're doing well. And thank you so much for being here. If I forgot someone, cut my head off later. Um but I'll make sure I'll keep continue to. Oh, gee, Patrice, how you doing? It's good to see you. I hope you're doing well. Scam. Scam, like me, where you been? 
Does this mean you got you a woman? Does that mean that? Because I ain't been seeing you a whole lot. Type in, hello, how are you? It's good to see you. Oh, he sends us a $2 super chat. He says, salute to Mr. Boss holding it down. He is back there in the back, but he talking junk, y'all. <laughs> so now I hear a boom, an explosion come from this side of the table. It's, it's for Mr. Boss, but thank y'all so much for that. No, I'm just kidding, though. He always picks at me, just in case you didn't know. Uh, what? Who else did I? Madeline. Miss Madeline Lopez. Good to see you. I haven't seen you here before, but thank you. And you, ah, your face is familiar, though. I saw you over at Allie's channel the other day. Thank you for being here. <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Um, if it's anyone else that I... Uh, black man, thank you so much for your five dollar super chat. He says, "SB, you look amazing today." I got you. <laughs> the standard of woman blossoms bright no matter what she wears. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. I got you on that cuss word. Though. You be trying to make me cuss, but I'm not gonna do it yet. No, just kidding. <laughs> I'm trying to mind my manners. Try to mind my manners. So anyway, that's the family. Dad, excuse me. Dad's the family. Thank you so much for being here. It's good to see you. Um, let's see. If there's anybody else here that I have not yet called out, forgive me. But I will try to look out for you guys throughout the show and definitely say hello to anyone that is new. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. And thank you for being here at SB Nation. We're going to Bethany. Hello. I haven't seen you in a while. I hope you're doing good. And the boys and the husband. I know you're taking care of them. I ain't got to ask. you representing. Y'all, Bethany represents. I just want y'all to know. I just want y'all to know. So listen, we're going to jump right into this because, Cece, hello. How are you? Listen, I got my faves in here. I know y'all going to keep this comment section lit up. I know y'all going to have plenty of questions. And listen, y'all can help me out because, again, I say, I didn't know this was a thing. But what I'm talking about is um, being, I'm talking about single motherhood per se. Right. And I'm talking about it because I was on a show on Wednesday with a young lady named Jazz Family Values. It's a show. Go over to Family Values, YouTube slash Family Values, I think, and check her out. Now, listen, y'all. Jazz is a hero. I shouldn't say hero. She's a she hero because Jazz has seven kids, y'all. And she pregnant with number eight. Whew, I don't know how she do it, but I'm just Clapping my hands to her. And she's a young woman. She looks good. She feels good. Let me tell y'all, one put me down. I'm like, oh, <laughs> today ain't a good day. But her, six kids. She's been married six years. Been married, excuse me, been pregnant every year. And she's pregnant now with baby number eight. So I got to get y'all hats off to Jazz. That's, that's, she did a great. She's doing an awesome job. So anyway, that is one thing I wanted to say. But anyway, her, she and I were over on um, Allie's channel, Real Femme. We were on her channel, Real Femme Sapien. We were on her channel on Wednesday. We did a show about blended families. How old is she? She's 30. I think she said she just turned 30, Moses, just turned 30. Beautiful woman. Eight babies, well, seven babies and one baking. Wow. Guess what, though? House was perfectly clean. I heard no children. I heard no movement. She was able to do a two and a half, two hour, at least a two hour um, panel with nothing. Go I mean, it was just amazing. T. Shaw, hello. How are you? So uh, my hats go off to her because I would expect I would at least hear one baby in the background. But no, no, Jasmine, she did her thing. So um, but what we were talking about was blended families because she had two kids be prior to her husband. And I, too, had one child prior to my husband and I only have one child. So. We were kind of talking about that. Now, listen, guys, I know I'm older than most of you all. Um, and one of the questions that was posed was, you know, SB, did you have a problem um, dating as a single mother? And my answer was no, I did not. And um, Jasmine's answer was a different from mine. But I'm talking about mine right now because I did not have an issue dating after um, I did not marry my once at that time, fiance, I did not have any issues dating. Um, it was no thing. And I didn't know it was a thing. But now I'm understanding that um, being a single mom is, of course, a negative. Now I've heard it and I understand it totally because that would not be your first choice. Men, because if you could find a woman who, shoot, if she's a virgin, that would be like plus, 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 plus five stars. If she's um, submissive and beautiful and 
um, fit, feminine and friendly. Oh, my God. Plus, 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 plus. So I understand. I understand. But here in this world that we live in, this real big world where things happen, people uh, go through things, make bad choices, myself included make bad choices. We have to deal with some of the things that we encounter or create for ourselves. But you know what? This is what I say. I did some things I would not was not supposed to do. I make an account for those things. And those things changed my life. I will never make those same mistakes again because I have accounted for them. And my mindset is now different. So I'm a different woman in, in a lot of ways. So I look the same. I may speak the same. But my mindset, the wisdom that I have and all are different. And they were different back then. So um the man that I was attracting was the man that I needed to attract. Because remember last week when we talked about this, I told you that um, you are who you attract. And men, we have to set examples. Men should set examples for who they want. And my husband was one of those men that actually took the time to set an example for the woman that he wanted. Okay. So he had already had a wife. He already had a son. So we were kind of like, hey. And he knew that he wanted a wife, right? He knew that. He actually said he prayed for a wife. And I know some of y'all be like, what? Don't nobody do that. Don't no man pray for no wife. But hey, mine said he did. Here I am 27 years later. Now, if you can say that, men, those who say that you don't pray for one, if y'all can say that, then hey, you didn't have to pray for yours. But mine said he did because he had gone through a very bad experience with number one. So we're going to leave it right there. It wasn't good. So now you know what you don't want. How can you be assured to get what you do want if don't if not nothing else but aligning aligning yourself with your creator? <laughs> and that's what he did, whether it was praying or talking, uh, meditating or whatever the situation is. He made his he got in proper alignment and he said, don't send me nothing else but what I want. And that was what it was. Now, dearly beloved, obviously, when he was in them conversations with his creator, he didn't say, well, make sure she don't have any children or make sure he wasn't doing that. He was more so with the woman, her character. Does she love you? Will she follow me? Those things. He wouldn't, he didn't, I guess he just didn't concentrate on her, you know, how many kids she might have because guess what? It was me. I had one. And that's, that's been the story. So bringing us back to current times on the other day on the panel, I realized now that it is a big thing for a man to date or to want a woman for a wife that has children from previous relationships. And again, there's so many things that could bring us to this, right? You have uh, women who have been had fiancés, maybe passed away, women who have been in marriages where uh, now they're married, they're divorced. They're still single mothers. I mean, the, well, I'm not ever saying, I'm not going to the point where I'm saying this mother, this woman has a child and she doesn't know who the daddy is. I'm just saying she's a single mother. It could be a lot of different situations that would make her a single mom. And I'm not saying the dad is not there. My child's father was always there, but I still was a single mother at a time. We did not marry. So that's what I mean. I mean, a woman that is not in marriage with her child's father. That is for me, a single woman, a single mother. So now I get that it's a thing, you know, it's a real big thing. And I'm saying to myself, wow, what do we do? Because there's a lot of good women out there. A lot of good women out there that have had to make choices that may go through things that may have um, lost their husbands that may have done a lot of that may have done a lot of different things that brought them to this place. So how do we fix this? Because in other words, I'm not telling any man to sacrifice anything. OK, I'm not. I wouldn't do that. It's totally would be up to you. But. Before I give you what my buddy is, let me tell you. Thank you, sir, here for your $9.99 super chat. It says SB Nation is clapping his hands. Thank you so much for that. You get the money line. So, anyway. What I'm saying is that you only have to pick one. And I had a child. I did. But I don't think my I, the situation was one that we had to, you know, we had to blend these families. My husband had a son. We had to blend these families. Right. I get it. But this, these are things that come with relationships. I did not know. I've gotten so many different comments from all different angles on. Oh, my goodness. 
the one that sticks out, all of them stick out. But the thing that bothers me the most is this, because I'm married. I've been married a long time. I have my husband. I love my husband. And can't nobody say nothing about him. Understand? <laughs> but the disrespect that men have for other men is outrageous. They're outrageous. The disrespect is outrageous. And it doesn't make sense to me that one man would make would be disrespectful to another man about his choice, because we're all talking about preferences and we always talk about what a man does or, you know, how men do it. Alpha male, beta men. We're always talking about that. And I'm always trying to help tell women to give value and add, you know, always value these men. You know, I need you to do that. Never take away from them, add value to them. But on the flip side of it, a man is living a life. He's happy. He's enjoying his wife. He's enjoying their life. They're making babies. He's taking care of them. He's covering the family. And she happened to have one child by another man. He's covering that one too. And he seems to be so happy. Russell Wilson, y'all know who he is. Guess what? There's others. It doesn't have to be somebody that is famous. But then we talk so negatively about this guy. And we single. Y'all be single. Me and y'all single. So you have no idea what it's like to even be in that committed type relationship. What, 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 why are you doing this? Now, see, listen, for me, for me, we were made from the creator. And if you got another way that you were made, I get it. I need to explain it to me because he gives you clear instructions on what a man is, an alpha man, how to be one, a leader, clear instructions on how to do it. He never said, leave this one out, leave that one out. Don't nobody said that. It's what is it's how this woman is for you. Is she a submissive woman? Will she, will she value you? Can she have your kids? Will she take on your legacy? Who knows? I'm not telling you to, to not have your preferences, but I'm first, I am telling you, don't dog out the man who, who had his preference and pick the woman that he's happy with just because she has a child or maybe two, because obviously these talking points may not be working because like I said, I was someone and the talking points went around when, when, when I was dating, but jazz is a younger woman. Her husband has impregnated her now six times. And he seems to be pretty happy with his legacy and her being a submissive woman and her valuing and respecting him as a man. And he's covering the household. Everything is good. So why would we ever disrespect this man? He's being a man. He's being a leader. He's providing, he's protecting. What else is it supposed to do? <laughs> and then I, you know, I'm wondering and women again, like I said, I didn't know we were at such a disadvantage because I thought that the presentation was the woman. If a woman and, you know, like I said, my child's dad was always there. So if a woman is presenting herself in a way and her child's father is there, you know, and, and that child is being raised and, and listen, oh, oh, let me stop right here. Let's stop for a moment. Let's just be honest. Ladies. If your kids are bad as hell, don't be trying to bring no man into your house. Now, come on. Don't do it. It's not fair. Don't do it. Don't do it. We got to have some disciplined kids in order if we want to share. Don't do that. That is wrong, wrong, wrong. Now I'm back. So, ladies, if you're, you have a relationship with your child's father and he's there and, you know, every the family is there. It's just that you're not a married woman. You're still a single mother. I, I don't see the fact. I don't see what's wrong with you being able to date or a man being able to date you and you having all those qualities that may be super, that may supersede a single woman in your same position, not in your same position, a single woman with no children. Actually, you may come out ahead because you know how it is to be a person that nourishes. You know how it is to be in a relationship with someone where a baby was born. Now, I may be talking to a different woman, still a single mother, but I do know that there is a lot of women out there who are single mothers who had children and they may not know who the dad is or they may not be in any relationship with that with that father. I'm not talking about that person. Y'all, I, I need to let you know. That's somebody else. I'm talking about the woman who was in a relationship that a child came out of, whether she was in a marriage relationship or one of a long term relationship where the husband is there. The husband um, is still the dad is still in the relationship are still involved in the child's life. But the husband or the man and the woman are not married. I'm talking about that. There's a difference. 
There's a difference. Now, if you want to take on the other, whether mother doesn't know who the kid's dad is, that's a totally different thing. That's on you all. I, I'm not, you know, but again, I'm saying I get it. I get that we may not have been the first choice, but guess what? I am my husband's second wife, but he tried, he tried the, uh, the perfect scenario first, you know, the young, beautiful woman, no children. And that was going to be his wife. He tried it. He did it. He did it. It didn't work. It didn't work. She wasn't the wife. It didn't work. So all the things he met all, you know, the sick, he met all, he, everything fit, feminine, friendly, did all of that single childless. She met all of that. It didn't work. Didn't work guys. So yeah, I'm number two. Dearly beloved. <laughs> oh, but I feel like I'm winning. <laughs> so all I'm trying to say guys is this, it only takes one. And if you find yourself with number two, and number two is winning, it's okay. Don't let anybody shame you. Don't let anybody talk against with talk against you. Just smile and keep going. And ladies, if you find yourself being number two, but it's working for you, <laughs> you winning. <laughs> I can't say it no better. I just don't know. I don't see the issue. I don't, I don't guys. But this is something, again, these are talking points. These are things that we're trying to make a problem. You only need one. And if the first choice that you made that fit all your criterias didn't work, it's okay to go num to number two. It's okay. And if that young lady number two has a child, because guess what? Life happens. You have to be the one to entertain those ideas about how we ended up here. If it's a woman who takes account for her life, she knows that you're a good man. She's submissive to you. She wants to have your babies. She wants to be under your covering. She respects and value you. Hmm, I dare you to walk away. <laughs> Dearly beloved. But if you do, hey, it's totally on you also. I'm just saying, guys, it was the, the, the amount of pushback that we got because I'm going to say this. I'm going to make it clear for all of you that left a comment. Would I tell my son to marry a woman that has three kids? No. I would not suggest that to my college age son. I think that was the scenario. I would not. My college age son, I would not suggest that he marry a woman that has three children. But guess what? I also wouldn't suggest to a woman who has three kids to marry someone until those kids get grown. Check out that accountability, guys. Remember, I always say a woman with a certain amount of children needs to devote all her time to the children. Dearly beloved. She needs to find the husband, well, not the husband necessarily. She needs to find the children's father. She needs to make sure that he or them have relationships with their children until those children get a certain age. And when those children get a certain age, then that mother of three or more could possibly entertain a husband. So this, these are my thoughts. This is just me. But again, I say my college age student, my college age child, boy, don't have one. Just what if? No, 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 no. I would tell him not to marry a woman with three kids. I would not. No, son, you don't need to do that. You don't. But guess what? I got something for the woman with three kids also because it's making everybody the best version of themselves. Now, if I told him no and he just keep pushing, pushing mama, I love her, whatever, whatever. You know what? Guess what? Do you do what you got to do? Well, I've already told you that this might not be the best situation for you. Dearly beloved. So, again, I have an answer for it. Because I would think that the mother of this, and then, you know, and if she's not ready, you know, if she thinks she can entertain another man, which could be what man number four or could be man number who knows the, how the kids fared out if they have the same father or whatever, who knows the situation, who knows? She may even be a divorced woman, even if she is a divorced woman or even if she's a widow who I don't really care about that. I just think that the children need a time to grow and for her to be devoted to them 
especially if they're a certain age. I really do. I just don't think that that's something um, that a woman that has three kids should take on right away. It would be a husband. Those kids need to grow. Now, again, it's a flip side to this. At 40, if my if my son is 40 years old and he coming to me, which he would not, I, he bet not ever. If I ever had a son and he's 40 coming to me, asking me what I think about him marrying someone. Listen, I would hope if I ever had a son, I would have grew him up a much better than this. Because at 40, you are a grown man and you're going to have to live with every your, every decision you make. I don't even know why you would be entertaining your mama with that decision. Now, if you want your mother just to meet the woman that you love, I totally agree. I totally agree with that. Now, then after you meet her and she says to you, baby, <laughs> I don't know about her. You got to bring her over here a couple of more times and get her in the kitchen or whatever she does. That's totally that's totally different. But a man that is 40 years old looking for permission to marry a woman. <coughs> I ain't agreeing with that, y'all. But guess what? Do what you want. <laughs> do what you want. You're going to do it anyway. You're going to do it anyway. Because guess what? Typically, mamas don't like nobody. Let's just keep it honest. Mothers like nobody. For their sons, ain't nobody good enough. Dearly beloved. Nobody. And the husband or the young, the son always finds out later on that mom may have been right or what have you. So anyway, um, that was what I wanted to talk to you guys about because there are good women out there everywhere but we have to think about what we're doing and what we really want and it can't always be in a cookie cutter situation we have to examine a few things but for right now listen guys let's get those likes up when you come into the live make sure you're giving me the thumbs up i would appreciate it so much and also if you have not subscribed to my channel make sure you do that i'm only a sh little bit away from four thousand did y'all hear me? I said 4,000. I'm only a little bit away from it. I need your help. If you all have not subscribed to my channel, this is Security Boss Unsolicited. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and make sure when you're coming up, I'm coming up, coming in, you're giving me a thumbs up. 4,000, y'all. That's my goal. That's my goal. I'm only a little bit away. Come on, let's get these likes up. Make sure you guys are sharing these videos. And I will appreciate, yes, 4,000. But thank y'all so much. It's, this is all because of you all. Guess what? And we're really close to being at a year. If I could get 4,000 in a year, now nah, y'all could do better than that. I can get more than 4,000 over. I can do more than 4,000 in a year because my year is in September. So we got some time. But guess what? Go ahead and subscribe now. That's okay. Thank y'all. But anyway, I'm just saying to you, I realize now that it's a thing. And, um, I want everyone to know to make it totally clear what I'm saying. I was a single mother. I made a mistake. I had sex with a man before I married him. I was supposed to marry him, but I'm so glad I didn't. Oh, but I met my husband. I'm my husband's second wife. So I've, I've been number two in a lot of things, but I'm still winning. It's okay. It's okay. I'm here telling you about it. I'm the perfect example. It wouldn't, nothing was right, but I'm, I'm right now. Because we can't keep it in a wrong position. I met a nice young lady today. Met a nice young lady today. And I, we talked, you know, and I, you know, she's 28 years old. She got twins. She got twins. She got a set of twins. She was with the young man, that, her child's father for 10 years. Some things happened. They did not get married, but what have you. She's now dating. But he's still talking to her. He's still trying to figure out what you're doing. Even though you're with another woman, he's still trying to figure out what you're doing. He's not married either. So you know what I said to her? Well, if y'all don't know, I suggested to her that they have that you go to your child's father, your children's father, and y'all have a conversation. Y'all, it's time for y'all to grow up. You're 28 years old now. He's almost 30. It's time. What are you looking for? You had babies with him. You're still talking to him for hours. Don't don't move forward. Figure out how we can fix this. Your kids would love it. Obviously, child's father would love it. You're talking to him for hours. Go fix it. Don't keep moving forward. Fix it. See, so many times we don't like to fix it. I'm going to tell you one thing that she told me, and it's going to stick out. This is something that's crazy. She said, I said, what would be one of the things you would say a, a major problem is with people in your generation? She said, we don't like to fix it. We don't like to stick it out. As soon as somebody do something wrong, we be out of there. <laughs> they be out. You got two kids and you out. No, 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 no. No, we got to get back to fixing things, you know, because you got two kids. We got little twin, twin boys. And mama can't do everything. Mama can't do most things. 
So and and dad's there. He lurking in the background. You know, he 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 not professing anything because she heard him. It's just real. She heard him. There was some trauma. There's some healing that needs to be done. There's some therapy that needs to be done. Go get it. But don't 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 let go. I, I want her to go back to her child's father, have a real, real conversation with him, real vulnerable conversation when you let all your ego and your pride go. Because y'all know we have them, right? Women, we have them. You know, instead of saying, oh, you did this, you did that. Take responsibility for what you did, had a conversation and see exactly. Make sure you're done because it don't sound like you're done, but make sure you're done before you walk away. Because it only takes one. And if you already had your one and you've been with your one and now you're sitting around somewhere knowing that that one was your one, y'all need to think about it. You might need to go back and get them. Because all these things that we have here, all these things that, we go, that we're going through and all these little cookie cutter things that we're trying to fit into, none of this is, I can't say none of this because y'all can get mad at this. A lot of this doesn't work. There needs to be and have to be something organic about a relationship that goes from day one to year 27. And if you're not finding it, you have to ask yourself, why are you not finding it? Why, why, why of all these people in this world, all these women and men that are in this world, why are we not finding an organic relationship? What is the problem? What am I missing? What am I not doing? What's going on? We have to do that. We have to slow down and ask ourselves why? Now, I'm not telling any man to give up his preferences. I'm not, you know, feminine, fit, friendly, submissive, kind. I'm, I'm with you all on that, all over it. I agree with you. I'm all over it. I want you to have that. I do. But I also don't want you to miss something that you might have looked over. You know, so Miss Jennifer says, SB, Lauren London was talking about letting go of egos and relationships in her latest interview. Ooh, I haven't seen it. I'm going to have to take a look at it. Thank you, Miss Jennifer. We do. We have to let go because guess what? We have a big problem with it because guess what? When we hurt, we hurt. Egos on both sides. Absolutely. Because men don't want to be vulnerable. Men don't even know they have trauma. But Haley, guess what? I'm not concerned with the men today. I'm concerned with the women because I want us to win. You know, let let every, let the men tell it they winning, they getting it together, they doing the work. You know, they coming up, and I, I agree with them. They are. We're the ones out here looking like chicken heads. Some of us, <laughs> dearly beloved. <laughs> but listen, Haley, we ain't trying to look like chicken heads. We're trying to win, and I'm trying to give us some keys to make sure we win. But Cedric Carr said, "Hey, Cedric, how are you doing?" It's good to see you. Thank you so much for your $4.99 super chat. He said, I agree. There are good women everywhere. I actually um, be seeing some of them on your, ch mm, your chat and Crimson Cures chat. I just don't qualify for them. Mm. Oh, I like that. I like that, Cedric. Now, see, I can't have you put all what I want to ask you next into the chat, but I like that. I really do. I do like that. King, the unpredictable husky. You know what? How are you doing? I haven't seen you in a while, but I'm so gl so glad to see you. It's been a while, but welcome. Thank you for being here. Salam. It's good to see you. I want to win a new wife at 70 years old. <laughs> I'm a widower. I know, but you know what? You got the secret though. You know what to do. We got to make sure these younger generation understands what to do and won't pass over something that can be great. You know, because we don't want to work it out. Hey, Jedi, how are you? So I'm getting back to it. So listen, um, the young lady told me that she, she didn't tell me this, but I told her. I saw ego and pride all over her because the young man cheated on her. And it was real. But guess what? When you got, um, when you got, when you have uh, two kids, a set of twins by a man, and you've been with a man five, I think she said maybe five or 10 years of her life or something like that. This is not something that you just walk away from. I understood that she was hurt. I understood that um, trauma, I understand all of that, but they basically were married without the papers, you know, and it just doesn't go away. I think I've said this several times when you have that kind of commitment or relationship with a person and, and they leave or something happens to you, some part of you goes with them. It, you just don't get over it. If you get over it like that, it was, it was no good anyway. You know, so that's what I'm saying. It was no good anyway. 
uh, hello, real. Hello, Ine. Um, X, who is it? XCDM. I, I'm saying it wrong. I'll get it in a minute. Uh, Gerard, thank you so much for your $5 super chat. Oh, you have it. Oh, I see here. I'm sorry, guys. We put the highlighting one and I'm doing another. Um, it's been good. Just had a newborn. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. You got to come tell us about that. You definitely will. Let's see. Um, Gerard says, SB, thank you for all you do. Your wisdom is greatly needed today. Thank you. <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm just saying when, when you have made those type of commitment, commitments and you all have had a child or in her case, twins, you don't walk away. You make sure that you're done with that. And obviously this man is um, still wanting to be in her life outside of the children because he, she said he, she, he called her and talked to her for a whole hour. She said he, they were actually best friends before they were lovers. Come on, y'all. You don't get that several times in your life. You don't get it. You don't get it. So don't don't allow yourself just to walk away from something that is real like that. And that, that's organic. This is what is organic. Organic relationships can um, last throughout because they, they consist of some amount of love and love becomes patience. It, it endures things. You know, um, it's not, you know, self-seeking. All those things become in those type of relationships when they're relationships that have been going on for a length of time, even though we maybe have not been perfect in those relationships, they still have some components of love in them. Now we might need to get better. We might need to grow up. You know, sometimes we do things because we're just young and dumb. Um, and as we grow older, our desires and our needs change. Um, and we should know that. So that's why we need to stay plugged in a, plugged in for a little longer. And that was just one of the things the young lady said to me about their generation, this generation now is they don't, they don't walk things out. They, they give up, they give up, they be out. I'm out. You know, soon something happened, I'm out. You know, you know what? I don't know how you do that when you got two kids, because I'm thinking, no, you're not out. No, you're not out until <laughs> you're not out until I say you out. I'm just kidding. But you just don't, you just don't walk away. And that's all I'm trying to say is we do not walk away from these relationships when we have them like that, because you only need one. It's only one that you need. And there are lovely women and men everywhere, everywhere they are. So, guys, make sure you're getting those likes up. Let's get them up. We Listen, we have what? Come on. Listen, I don't know what's going on with you all right now. Y'all don't like what I'm saying. I'm sorry. I'm just telling the truth. I need y'all to hit that like button when you come into the live. I appreciate it so much. Um, XDMC, hello, how are you? I'm glad that you came and you're here for me. I messed up your initials earlier, but I'm glad we're back. It says you have to be trained, Hunter, to find that one. Mm -mm, I had to go through a lot of weeds before I found my flower. It's rough out there. Listen, if you say so, I don't know. Maybe your stipulations was very, very high, which I don't mind that either. But guess what? You found her. You did. You found your flower. And that's all that matters. You put the work in and you found her. And that's what we're talking about, finding her. But, you know, I don't know. Was she perfect? Who knows? Probably not. But guess what? Excellent. Maybe a better word. How about that? How about that? We got to have somewhere to go, right? We have somewhere to go. She could be excellence. And then we're moving on to perfection. And she's perfect for you. So that's what matters. And that's my point I'm trying to make is that because I was number two, if you want to see it that way. I never saw it that way. I never saw it that way. My husband never treated me as number two. I saw myself more of a learning lesson. <laughs> I was more of the one that you did. Listen, he would say, listen, I know what I don't want and I know what not to do. So I kind of considered myself the one. And guess what? I was. <laughs> I'm the one. So y'all keep that in mind when you're looking. And again, there are women are single sometimes for a lot of different reasons. And listen, don't this make y'all think about something? I bet not say that because I don't want to confuse the situation because I'm talking about women who are single mothers who have been in relationships with the child's father. I'm not talking about women who are having children and they have no idea who the children's father is or are or have you have you have it um those women i do think that they need to take some time to figure out what kind of life they want to live 
and they need to account for what they've done. They need to get this stuff together. And then once they've done that, then them too, them too, they, they can actually go out there and find someone also. But it needs to be a time. It needs to be a time and a place where they can uh, figure out what they've done wrong if they don't know who their child's father is or if that they, that child's father is not in that child's life. Meaning, I think sometimes relationships need to be mended. Because uh, if you've got a child out there, especially a boy child and a girl child too, but the boy children, and you don't know who the daddy is, I've said this before and I'm going to say it again. I need you to find them. I need you to try to build a relationship, not necessarily you, not a relationship with you, but make sure he's building a relationship with his son because a, a boy child needs the discipline that a man gives him. You know, now if he's totally just a bum and there's nothing good with that, you know, it's actually a, it's actually bad to do. I'm mad at you lady. Cause you picked them, but guess what? We go get over it too. Cause we make mistakes. We all do. But I need you to find that young man, some kind of mentor or somebody that can get some discipline or put some discipline within that child. Boy, children need discipline. They do. They need discipline and they need structure. And it's not something that women can do. Uh, we might can do a little bit, but then it comes a time when that young man starts feeling things, experiencing things that we have no idea how it's controlling them. None. Y'all don't know. We can read all types of books. We will never know because we will never experience it. And if you are experiencing it, you are, <laughs> you, you're different. <laughs> no, you're not experiencing them. That's why you need a mentor. You need your child to have a mentor. And I am pushing that for any woman. It's just time to grow up. It's time to stop being about ourselves, women, and making sure, you know, it's all about us. You know, but a lot of times we say little crazy stuff. You know, he did this. He did that. He ain't hitting on good. He, he ain't. Mm. You know, we talk about the, the child's father negatively a lot. And it's sad that we have tangled ourselves up with people that we feel that bad about. Now, do we really feel that bad about them or just we on the other side talking? So whatever it is, we need to grow up and get beyond ourselves and make it about the child. If there's no relationship with the child and their father, um, we got to do it. We got to do it. You know, and I think that, that we should spend our time single mothers. We need to spend our time doing that instead of trying to find a man to marry. I think that this is a time for everything. If your child's father is not in his life, we need to spend our time putting that relationship together first. Because guess what? If you have a boy child and he doesn't know his um, dad and never had a relationship with any man, he's not going to be any good for a man that's coming to try to be with his mama. It's going to be bad, y'all. It'd be really Dearly bad. beloved. He already think he the man of the house. He's going to be laying up in her bed. Y'all seen it, baby boy. Y'all seen it? Y'all seen it's going to be just like that. That may not be the best example because baby boy was old and grown. I don't know what was wrong with his mama, but, you know, start, start at 13 with that and see how it goes. So there's, there's a time. There's a time when um, should be that should be mothers should be devoting to children um, if they miss that time. If they miss that time finding a husband, there is a time that the mother should be devoted to children where it's not going to be a good relationship to bring in a man. But beyond that, you know, I see nothing wrong with a single mom if she's a good woman. And it could be your number two. It's okay. She's, she's, she's ready. Uh, most of them, you know, if, you know, if they are ready for a husband, you have to make that decision though. Is she ready for a husband? Is she ready to be covered? Is she ready to allow you to um, lead her? Is she ready for you to be the head of her household? Or is she in the, in the mode of controlling everything so much that she can know, she cannot see who you are as a man? If that's the case, then y'all leave it at the restaurant. She's not the one. So make sure y'all getting those thumbs up, likes up, get the likes up guys. Make sure you're getting the likes up when you come into the live. Um, but that, that, that's what I wanted to talk about because it was just so much of a backlash in one way. And some people definitely understood, others did not. But like I said, the part that sticks out with me the most is the disrespect for the men who do do it. Um, leadership, leaders are leaders. Men are men. Um, you know, I, I can't feel how you all feel. I don't know how you feel about it. But there's, there's men out there who mentor young boys, there are men out there who don't mind being stepdads because um, that child 
or that other man doesn't change them from being who the, the men that they are. So what they're looking at is that woman and how she's contributed to that little boy's a little girl's life and the kind of woman that she is and how she's going to contribute to his life. That's what they're looking at and focusing on, because guess what? It's obvious to me that the women who should be in those perfect positions, those childish positions, um, those women that should be submissive, those women that should be pouring in and looking for those coverings, those should be willing to add value to the men, be assets. From, they're not doing it they, for some whatever reason. Maybe it's the time that we're in. They're pushing way back on it. They're like, hmm, I don't know. I don't know. Or they're going through with it. And then their intentions are not good. You know, they may be marrying because the man may be a, a not necessarily a high value man, but a high earner. So they're, they're looking at how much money he makes. They're looking at what he can do for me outside of, you know, it's more so me than what I can do for him or how we're going to be together. But for whatever reason, those relationships are not working. And I'm just saying, if it's not working, ladies, it's okay to be the number two. And men, y'all respect these men, respect the men, you know, because all these single women out here, all these single mothers, there's some daddies out there that are not accounted for. Now, I don't know where they at. I have no idea. But guess what? We have a problem. There's a problem somewhere. It, it, these are single dads also. And I bet these single dads are in relationships with women because women, for some reason, we don't care. We'll take a man with a child. Some of us, some of us, you know, some of us may not, but we'll accept a man with a child. I think it depends on the man and too much is too much. But anyway, that was just what I wanted to share with you guys. Listen, we got to learn how to respect each other. Um, what we talk about being married or what I talk about being in marriage, becoming one with another. It's almost crazy that we talk about this because I can't even it's like we have a there's a war going on out there. No, not over here at SB Nation, but out there in these spaces, there's a war going on. And for whatever reason, we're not hearing each other. We're not listening. Women, women are saying, hey, I need you. I want, I want you to be in my life. I need you to do this. I need you to cover me. I need you to, I need you. I value you. I want to be with you. And the men are saying, I need you to do this. And I need you to do that. And it's almost like they're saying the same thing, but for some reason, they can't have no meeting. Excuse me. And I don't really know why. So I do know, though, there's a lot of disrespect that is being thrown left and right. A lot of talking points that are being thrown left and right. And we could just have an organic conversation with your real thoughts and feelings. And you don't throw up a stat that doesn't apply. I mean, somebody told you it applied, <laughs> but the reality is showing that it don't apply. I would appreciate it. But guess what? Again, nobody wants to be lonely. No woman I know, no woman I know wants to be lonely. Haley, Dearly beloved, no trust. Hmm. No trust. You're right. There's no trust. There's no respect. But we got to get right. This, this has to be right, though. We got to get back to where we do trust. And when we say no trust, what, what, what are we looking for as in trusting, though? I want to know. So listen, guys, we're going to drop the link. Y'all have heard me go back and forth with my comment section in my videos long enough. I want to hear what y'all say because, Haley, I want to hear more about no trust. I want to hear what you're not trusting. Because when I when you say that, the first thing that comes to mind are past relationships. I can't judge my husband on anything that I dealt with previously. If so, I would have never married my husband. Dearly beloved. And guess what? He wouldn't have married me either. So Cedric, again, thank you so much for your $4.99 super chat. He says, no cap. I'll be willing to be a stepdaddy, but a lot of single mothers come off. Oh, arrogant. Hey, almost entitled. My opinion. Hmm. I am childless though. Hmm. By the way, really, this is new. So, hmm. They come off arrogant. That's interesting. I want to hear more about that. I never thought about that. So I wonder why. What puts them in a position to be arrogant, knowing that they do have a child, knowing that knowing that they may not be the first choice or that is something that's negatively against them. I wonder why it goes back to those egos again, those egos and that pride. Pete says females cannot devalue men. R. Wilson, simp. 
females cannot devalue men. Russell Wilson, simp. Okay, this is if this uh, Pete is this an example? Or are you calling uh, Russell Wilson a simp? If you call a Russell Wilson a simp, then um, you are disrespecting Russell. I'm assuming because simp is negative, right? I haven't really gotten a true meaning of a simp yet. It changes seems like every other week, but it's never anything positive. But you know, somebody told me my husband was sipping for me, and I said he better. <laughs> so I don't know. Dearly beloved, y'all got to help me out with this. I don't know what what simp mean today. <laughs> help me out. And Pete, if you disrespecting Russell Simmons, I dare you to do that. Come on now, that man, not Russell Simmons, Russell Wilson. Wilson, that man is enjoying himself. He has a beautiful wife. You know, I, I see that she out there doing a whole lot of things. But guess what? I bet he putting a stamp on it because he woulda. He's loving it for whatever reason. He loving it, y'all. He loving it. It's obvious. It's obvious, but guess what? We ain't talking about Russell. We're talking about your neighbor. We're talking about myself. We're talking about regular average people who uh, want and need to be in relationship. Okay, Pete said he is a simp, plain and simple. Pete, how long you been married? You sound like you've been married a long time. I hope you are, Pete. Pete, tell me what um, simp... Listen, I'm going to drop the link. If you're decent and you're not busy, would you please come up and explain simp to us and tell us how Russell uh, Wilson is a simp? Because he looked like to me, he enjoying life. He got all the money he want, got the women he want, excuse me, get the, got the woman he want. Um, he having kids by her. His legacy is growing. It seems like everything working out for him. But Pete, I want to know from you. I want to know. Nurse fans to say simps are so attractive. <laughs> I know they are. They win, don't they? <laughs> Listen, nurse fancy, maybe we have it wrong. But maybe we got to get a new definition of simp. You know, the simp definition changes weekly. So um, if someone's willing, Pete, give us uh, in the comment section, tell us what a simp is this week. Honestly, I want to know because it keeps changing. But I, I still want to know this. The man has a choice. Russell Wilson had a choice. You know, he has his preferences. He has all of that. And he made a decision on what he wanted. Why would we be calling him names that are negative? If this is negative. Um, Freeman's Journal says, but guess what? Giselle Bunchen is, is in her house not twerking. Okay. All right. I feel like I've missed something. <laughs> Listen, Sierra is twerking. Maybe um, Russell is a modern man that don't mind his woman twerking. Obviously, he is. He is a modern man. That's the part that y'all missing. Y'all maybe want him to be a traditional man because he's of high value and can call all the shots. But Russell's saying he like to see it twerk. He's looking at it just like you all do and probably a whole lot more. Come on. What, what, what's the problem with that? If that's what he wants. And y'all can't deny that's not what he wants, unless y'all think that he's run, she's going behind his back. Now, come on. Y'all know he's not going. You know that. Y'all know he's not. She's there. He's there and she's there. I bet at every one of those photo shoots, Russell is there. Probably telling, telling her, go harder, baby. Go harder. Make him mad. He's probably doing all of that. Because guess what? Y'all talk about him like every other week. <laughs> but the man is winning. Why, when are we going to see that the man is enjoying himself? Even if it's for a short period of time, he's enjoying himself. He's enjoying himself. I hate it, but he is. He is. And no one can tell me what a simp is, really. Mel, you tell him what a simp is. Air security boss. No simp. Uh oh. Hold on, Mel. Let me see what you say. I need a definition for a simp this week because when, when I was younger, a simp was something different. Uh, he says, no simp, period. And I'm not applying. Um, that to Russell. I don't think he's simping nor a simp. He's not. He's enjoying his life. He's And, and, and you know what? This is the sad part about it. I bet any man would want to live his life. Any man want to live his life. Now, you might not want your woman out there twerking for the world, but you want what he got. He seems to be very happy. He has um, all the money. He probably got more money than he could spend. He has children. He has a legacy. He's playing football. He's 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 a businessman. All of that. He good. So every that's what men want. That's what we want. That's what y'all want. And he has it. But his woman is out here twerking 
and that makes him a simp because he's going for it. Yeah, he already put his foot down. He's getting what he wants. So Haley says, why are these strange men coveting another man's wife? You know what? I don't know anything about it. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I think, I just think it, it looks good. Sometimes when things look good, we have to make it bad because it can't necessarily be real. Hey, Shannon, how are you? It's good to see you. I wonder, but you know what? A lot of times now, too, the things that look good are bad anyway. You know, we reverse that thing. My wife has a class. Oh, okay. Has class. has class. I'm sorry. Forgive me, y'all. I leave words out. Y'all know I can't see too good, right? Sometimes things get a little blurry. Who is this camming up that's wanting to talk about this? Mel, that's you. Let's see. Um, anybody, y'all listen, the lines are open. Um, I want someone, I want Pete to tell me, Pete, where you at? Oh, King says, King Husky says, um, I, I was getting ready to read his comment because I think he's giving me a definition of a simp. Laugh out loud. Uh, simp is lets women disrespect him, all him, and allow her to and be okay with it. Oh, okay, that's what a simp is. I thought, a, okay, so that's this week's definition of a simp. Okay, so it's disrespectful that Russell's wife would twerk for the camera and he allow it. Because so we consider twerking off, you know, that's so. Mel joined. What I would like to know though is could what I want or what my husband wants for me be different from what Russell wants for his wife? Could that, could we want different things? Is that possible? Is that possible? Because let me tell you what I, I think. I mean, because, yeah, I wouldn't be twerking either, you know, but for whatever reason, they got some top, some type of agreement that they've come to, um, you know, but we let relationships are different. All of them are different. I don't know what it is because, you know, you got what's it, Will and Jada over there doing their thing. She's not twerking, but she's being pretty disrespectful, too. Right. We would say that. And then we got uh, Russell and his woman over here. Y'all say Sierra's being pretty disres disrespectful too, but it's for some reason, Russell is not seeing it as being disrespectful. We're saying that he's being disrespected. So what exactly in a relationship is disrespect? I, I want to know this because this is important because disrespect is so different now. You know, it used to be pretty cut and dry. Now it's, it's not. It's not at all. I still use the basic rule from 40 years ago, virgin as the basis of a simp. Um, there, I can't, it went away. Hold on for a minute. Madeline, let's see. Madeline says, I still use the basic rule from 40 years ago, virgin, 40-year-old virgin as the basis of a simp. They're putting a mm -mm on the pedestal. Don't treat women like angels. We're flawed humans. Now, see, I can, re you know what, Madeline, I can, I can relate to this, but now we've added, we ain't going to talk about now. I'm going to go with you. I like that. So you feel like, do you feel like that Russell, do you all feel like Russell is putting Sierra on a pedestal by allowing her to be an entertainer? I guess I don't even know what the conversation is like. I feel kind of crazy talking about it because I don't know what kind of agreement they have. If that's what y'all think, I can agree with that. But that's Russell and his wife. I happen to think, and I know y'all gonna think I'm crazy, but I happen to think that Sierra is pretty submissive to Russell. It looks like to me. Now she's sent, she's out there twerking, and I can't imagine why he would be allowing her to do that. The only thing I can see that even makes sense to me is that he's there with her, and in some kind of twisted way in his mind, it's like he's playing with the world. Cause he may hear all these, these, he may hear all this lashing out that people do towards him. He may hear this, but from what I know of Russell, I think he is a godly man and that's who he follows. So I'm almost thinking that she's very submissive to him. And now what kind of agreement they got with her twerking and all of that? I, I don't know. You know, I don't know, but guys, listen, ladies, if, if any of you want to come up, please do. Um, it's time we're going to share and figure out where we're going with this because uh, like I said, I am a, uh, I'm a number two and nurse fancy. I know you're out there. You wanting to have a, a marriage relationship. You ready to have a good relationship and you too have been married. Your child's father is in his life, but guess what? You still are a single mother per se. You were just like myself. You deserve to have a good man. You deserve to have a good man. You know how to treat him. You know, all the things that you did wrong or incorrect with number one, you want to do something different for number two. I agree with you. 
He ain't worried. He ain't worried at all. Stephen Day say he ain't worried at all. He's not. But I'm just wondering, though, because I, I want to hear from men that have been in relationships. What is it about him? And Madeline explained it best. The disrespect. If you see her twerking as disrespectful as her husband, then that would be him being a simp. But if he doesn't view that as disrespectful, I don't think he will. Okay, so simp, ultra beta male gives unconditionally to an undeserving female. Weak, doesn't stand his ground. Now, all right, Pete, are you saying that you know Russell is this person? Well, damn, are you his neighbor? I like that, Pete, though. I like your definition. I do. Um, I really like your definition. I, I thank you. Thank you for coming back with something. That was good. But um, I don't know Russell that way. It seems like to me that Russell definitely stands his ground. Now, are you saying we got to well, wonder, though? I wonder if he told her, you're going to have to stop twerking. Would she stop? That's a good question, Pete. I wonder. I wonder. But you know what? We are, we're talking about uh, women and, and uh, her being undeserving. Would you say her being undeserving is because she had a, a child previously by the, what's the guy name? I can't call it, Future. She had a guy, a baby by Future. Would that make her undeserving? Because I want to hear about that too, because she's winning too. See, she's number two. She's she's baby mom. She's, she, she had a relationship with a man. She's a single mom and she's winning. So would that make her undeserving? Because guess what? I was in that same spot and I'm winning too. Now I don't twerk on the highway. I don't do that. I'm a good wife to my husband. Very respectful. Dearly beloved. Very, very respect. Undeserving woman is the question. I'm Pete. Pete, what you doing? If you're not busy, can you come up and help us? We're just trying to learn today. I want to learn from you. And I want to know your status in finding or being married. I want to know. I definitely do. Because this is a huge world. You only need one. And I want to know. I want to learn. I'm already married, but I'm I want to want to be able to convey this message to other women because when you say somebody's undeserving, I want to know how do they become undeserving and what makes one person more deserving than the other. I do get though. I do understand that a virgin or someone that has not been married or has not had a child would be your first choice. I get that. That would have probably been mine too, but hey, it didn't happen that way. So I married a man who had already had a son and a, and a previous wife, which I think I made a real good choice because the one that I was supposed to marry, he was all of that and he wasn't, he wasn't right. He turned out to be not good, y'all, but he was all of what you're talking about though. He was, um, you know, a single man, a military guy. Uh, he didn't have any children. My child, you know, our child was the first one. He seemed to be perfect on paper, just like what you were describing. Perfect on paper. But guess what? We had to ball up that paper and burn it. I'm sorry. He was good for somebody. Else. But the one that I chose, he had a little bit of rough edge. He was a little bit. Had gone through a bad marriage. He had all that. He had, you know what? He had a little bit of the world in him. Hmm. Didn't like that part, but it was still there. But he made an excellent husband because he was trying. He tried. He was wanting to do all those things. He wanted to be a good husband. And I'm often thinking those who think they have it all together and they fit that, that you know, they fit that mold, you know, on paper. It looks good on paper. I wonder, do they try? Pete, where you at? I wonder, do they try? Because you, because sometimes when you, when you have it all together, you really don't try. You feel like you just deserve it. You act, you actually say people are undeserving. You say things just like that because you have it all together. Pete says all deaf are, are subjective. All deaf. Pete, I'm sorry. I don't know. D E F. I'm not sure about that. But anyway, when you are together on paper, sometimes when you have, you know, you, you dotted all the I's, you crossed all the T's, you don't think it's anything for you to do. You know, you, you're there, you got it. Take me, you know, but it's still some things that are not there. And I think um, me marrying my husband, him being, um, him being married before, he was a smarter man because he had actually experienced something. And me um, having a child, and then him marrying me and still him still being that man, though, he was a man. I say this all the time. My husband was a man 
And I wonder too, we haven't had this conversation, but I wonder with him, did he, was he intimidated at all by the fact that I did have a child? Because remember, we didn't have any of that um, baby daddy drama. We didn't have any of that. My, my child's father knew his place. He was the child's father, but my marriage was <laughs> totally off limits. We didn't play these games. There was no sneaky links. There was no, oh, you my first, so I got you. No, no, there was none of that. I had a man. My husband was a man. So we didn't have those problems. So I wonder, though. I wonder all about that. I definitely do. So um, what we go. So listen, guys, I'm telling you, let me let me just read some of these comments because y'all coming in. And Pete says, do your research on Russell Wilson, his career. Seriously. Um, you know what, Pete? Let me say this. I appreciate you so much for your engagement and you're helping me out and going back and forth with me here in the chat today. This, this is sincere, but um, the reality of it is I'm not interested in Russell Wilson and Sierra. I'm more, I'm more interested in you, Pete. I'm more interested in Nurse Fancy. I'm more interested in Brittany B, Danny, people right here in this chat making Dearly sure beloved. I'm more interested in y'all getting it right than anybody that has all the money they want can live whatever life they want and choose anybody they want. I'm not, I don't care about them and what they're doing. I'm more concerned with you all and making sure that you all are the best versions that you all are and that y'all are getting the best information. The, the things they do in their life, that, that ain't, that's not my problem. It's not. And we can't really even relate, tell you the truth about it. Because, um, you know, I wouldn't point you in the direction of a woman that twerked on um, the highway. I wouldn't. I would say no. Obviously, I would. I would say no. Absolutely not. Um, but the same thing is this. I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, point a woman um, in the direction of a tyrant. I wouldn't do it. I would be like, no, there's something missing here. So I'm more concerned with y'all. Um, and I, I am more concerned with too with respect because women need to respect women. Men need to respect men. All men Russell, even even though he's maybe making some bad decision, he still deserves to be respected. And Pete, you deserve respect. That's why we. That's why we're. That's how we add the value back into it. How can we? How can I not value a man that's doing what he wants to do and he ain't asking me for nothing? He gets. You know, a man stand on his own two feet, doing what he want to do. Come on, y'all. Why, why? That's value right there. We're trying to we're trying to tell women that we need to for you out to value men. I'm trying to show y'all what's. I'm trying to show women where men show up very valuable. My husband was a man. Was he? Um, I had a young man the other day. He made a comment. He said, "If a broke man can't have a woman." Why uh, then a single mother can't have one or something of that nature? Y'all tell me how that makes sense. Dr. Eugene. Why why a broke man can't have a woman? Who said that? Who said that? And then what what let's let's clarify brokenness too. What is being broke? Does that mean you gotta have a six figures? You have to be six figures to have a woman? Y'all listen, if, if I haven't said this more than enough, when I met my husband. He was not a rich man, but he was a man. He knew exactly what he wanted to do, right? He knew exactly what he wanted. There was no doubt he was an entrepreneur. He was a leader. It was all over him that he was a leader. So even though he did, he wasn't a rich man, the plan that he had for his life, I fell right into it. He gave me the vision. And when I say that, y'all, y'all need to hear this. I was a person that grew up with people that worked jobs. My dad worked a job all his life, one. He had one, two jobs all his life. My mother, the same. I was fine working a job. My husband gave me the vision of being an entrepreneur and how important it is to create your own destiny as in your livelihood by creating a job. This way you can determine when your money's coming and going. Work for yourself. My husband gave me that. That was his plan. Now, how it's going to be orchestrated throughout our marriage, it was on him. It was on us. We were going to do it. OK, but he was a man and him not having a lot of money, him not having a lot of money didn't make no difference. Y'all got please, men, Don't allow your manhood to be tied up into your money, because if you go broke, when men go broke, guess what they do? That, that's the ones start jumping off the bridges and stuff. Them the ones because they can't handle brokenness. But see, when you are when you know that there's more out there to, to this life than you. Are you connected to the creator? You realize that you having a six figures ain't it because money comes and goes, especially if you're an entrepreneur. It comes and goes. So I just need y'all to know that. Now, Pete says this right here. Let me read that comment that 
peak maker. So I think he's talking about the alignment. He says, God over Jesus. And I lost the comment. Pete, what did you say? Pete had a comment here. Mr. Steele, how are you? He says, God over Jesus. God over Jesus, Jesus over God over Jesus, Jesus over man, man over woman, woman over children, children over pets in natural order. Um, yeah, you're exactly right. Um, that's 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 the only way it can be. I'm not sure why you're discussing that, but I'm so glad that you know that, and that is what you believe. With that, you won't go wrong. Mrs. Steele, can you turn your mic down just a little bit? Dr. Steele, can you turn your mic down? Thank you. Pete, that is the, that's a divine order, I think, but so often we get away from the creator. Remember the man, Jesus and God, whew, one and the same. We got to get, we, that's where we got to stay. If we can stay in that, listen, that's the only way. That's the only way. But, but for some reason, we, we tend to like start leaning on our own understanding and we forget who's, who's running this show. We forget. So Dr. Steele. Oh, hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. What would you like to add? Um, what would you like to add over into this conversation? Well, you said it best that there are good women out here, but but the but the part of the title that really stuck out to me, I really believe this too. You only need one. One is all you need. <laughs> I have seen so many men. Well, I've heard of so many men to where they had to have more than one woman, you know, you know, to satisfy him. But, you know, one one is enough, you know, to me, because, I mean, all it takes is one woman, you know, you know, to do the cleaning, to do the cooking and all those things and stuff like that. You don't need more than one woman, you know, to do that. But you know what? So often. I think when men make those statements, there's they're speaking of their flesh, you know, um, and I think sometimes, you know, you know, this world will confuse you a whole lot, you know, it'll confuse you and, and it, it'll have your mind really twisted. And we, we there's many examples of it, you know, that I could probably call out, but I'm not calling nobody out today. But um, it's one woman. And sometimes often uh men and women, they think about it and then they, they, they've they totally missed that one. They miss it. And then they go on and they try to create something with another, which sometimes it may or may not work, but you are right. I think it only takes one. And sometimes I think we might miss the one that we should have made it work with, but it is what it is. Let's do this. Hold on for one moment. Let's do this $10 super chat for Miss Nurse Fancy. Hello. How are you? And thank you so much for your $10 super chat. You get the money line. Money I'm every time. Give me my going up me no decline. Money I'm every time. Give me my going up me no decline. Dr. Steele, you went on the money line. I think you're the only one that have accomplished all the words, and you know them yourself. <laughs> well, just the chorus of it anyway. <laughs> listen, that's about the most we can get. <laughs> the most we can get. But listen, um, you you are exactly right. Listen, it is hard to hear. Now, you're an older man, so it'll, it'll be it's probably different for you because the older you get, if you meet a woman, she's probably going to have some children or a child. Now she may the children may or may not be adults, but how do you feel about that? Well, personally, you know, I would prefer to, you know, date a woman who doesn't have children living with her. This is why I, as part of my preference, I would prefer a woman who's thirty-five to fifty, because more than likely, you know, their children are already grown, or at least close to it. Um, but if he does, if she does, um, you know, I would prefer a child to be not younger than 16 because when you're 16 years old, whether you're mature or not, you know, at, at least you get a sense of knowing what you're doing, knowing the basic right and wrongs and everything. Uh, but when you have young, younger children, which again, 
you know, with women 35 to 50, you're not going to see that very many of them. Um, you, it's a difficult situation, especially when, when she has more than one. And um, I mean, I wouldn't mind having children myself, but, you know, I just started, it's like I'm just starting to see this woman already, right? And I don't want to be like an instant father or anything. If I end up, um, um, you know, being attached to that child, you know, let it be a slow attach, okay? Don't let it be, uh, um, don't let it be, what is that word, instant. Mm. Don't let it be instant. So let me see. Okay, so you you're you wanting to date a woman between thirty and thirty five and fifty. Okay, but you want to have children. I would like to have children one day. Yes. So you might need to go down a little bit. You might need to get you a thirty year old. Don't you think? Because you know, a thirty five year old. That's when they start saying that we're becoming what geriatric geriatric pregnancies and stuff, right? Eggs and things of that nature. That so might get yeah, hard. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Listen, well, I hope you can do all that. I would like to see you at one. I like to see a little junior, a little junior Dr. Steele. <laughs> hey, hey. You know, I'm a junior myself, believe it or Woo. not. Okay. You know, my dad has my first name. <laughs> I would like to see that. Definitely. Because you, why not? You know, to take on your legacy. Because you have a very small family, don't you? Uh, yeah, it's just it's, it's just three of us, you know, my mom, my dad, and me. Wow. My family is pretty small too. That would be neat for you to, you know, we're going to have to, um, we're going to have to definitely seek and we figure something out. We need you a good 30 year old woman, good church going woman that loves Lord. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be good. I agree. You'll take care of her too. I could just see it now. <laughs> <laughs> see it now. Yeah. Wow. So listen, do you have anything else you want to add to this? And just we'll just go from there. Uh, I think that's all I have on my, on my mind right now. You know, about, you know, you know, men only needing one woman because one woman is all you really need, you know. Wait, do, do you understand this pushback that we have about women um, having, you know, being single mothers and dating men? Do you see the pushback that we get? as single mothers. I mean, it's been a long time since I was a single mother, but do you understand? Do you, do you agree with it? Or do you see what they're saying? Well, you know, it depends on the woman herself, really. There are some single mothers who do have ratchet attitudes. Absolutely. And, and you know, you know, don't really care about the child. And then you have some who are, who are dead serious about taking care of their, their children. Now, I wouldn't, again, you know, I would prefer, you know, not to be with a single mom, but if a man want to court a single mom, then I think it's wise for that man, as part of the court courting um, process, he needs to check out how she treats her children. Mm. I think that should be a factor. Because there's a chance that you know any man who um, uh, get with a, 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 a single mother, Demi, she more than likely would love children already, and he would like you know to see children treated good. So yeah, I think if if a man wants to court a single mother, check out how she treats her children. Yeah. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming up. And uh, we're going to still hope that we get to meet somebody for you. I, I want you to be able to carry out that legacy like you want to and be a third. I have a third little boy. He'll be the third. Or would he be the second? Is that considered the third or the second? Well, I think, well, listen, I think he would be, yeah, Eugene still the third. I like the sound of that. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to wish you all luck with that one. But thank you so much for coming up. And um, again, thank you for supporting the channel. You always do. And you're always here with good advice. So we appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Danny G. 
my respect, my respect. <laughs> Keep up the good work, you know. Thank you, Danny. By now, by now I can call you the standard right now. Cause I've seen you in all the platform with the show, because I'm everywhere. I'm ready. <laughs> now I like this information. It's like food, good food you like you eat, and I love it. So I'm everywhere. I'm following you. So I see you on the platform doing great things. So everybody, let's call the boss the standard. She is because you put in okay. Okay. Order I, women in order. They are out of order. Like that name. Out of them. You know I like yeah. that name. <laughs> you the standard, yeah. Somebody that for for some women who didn't have uh, maybe a mother or maybe didn't have a good mother, I I recommend that they look at you and the success you did. You marry. This is how you done it, so they can be able to get themselves a man. Because there's a lot of men out there. There are men in church everywhere. So you just gotta know what you need and don't be uh, required too much. Keep everything simple. Because back in the days. Everything was simple. That's how we have many of us in the black community. We, we most of us were married. Most of us used to go to church, you know. And and the movement from from get out from slavery to find ourselves in society, it comes inside the church. Martin Luther King was a pastor, so right. let's not ignore that. So yeah, so keep up the good work. Um, Hold on for a minute. Hold on for a minute. Yeah. I got to ask you a okay. question. Let me do this super chat. It says here, uh, type in. Thank you so much for your $5 super chat. It says the phrase you only need one is an offset of not all. It's so bad. We have to argue not a hundred percent. You won't get one is a more objective phrase. You won't get one <laughs> is a more objective phrase. <laughs> no, you only need one is, is the phrase, but thank you so much for your $5 super chat. You only need one. And the reason why we say this is because if if we think that all single mothers are like, like you said, not all, they're not. But when you are putting up a sign and says, no single mothers allowed. And then you say, you men that are dating single moms are simps. You know, nobody wants to be part of the, the simp club, right? Nobody wants to be, you know, like I was some, told the other day, I'm number two. I'm number two and I'm winning. It's okay with me to be number two. But I'm still going to be respected. Well, why can't I be respected at the choice that my husband for the choice that my husband and I made or, the, beloved. or the man that did make the decision that we're calling a simp? How come he can't be respected for the choice that he made? I mean, I'm looking for respect now. Forget all that other stuff. I just want us as as individuals, men and women to respect each other and get beyond all these differences that we may have that are really not any differences. I just want to get beyond that. But anyway, Danny, tell me this. Have you ever dated a single mom? Wait a minute, are you married? Uh, I used to, not anymore. But but it's not a curse, it's a bless. It's because my marriage didn't last really long. The reason is uh, the lady, uh, she's quite lacking in terms of uh, the knowledge of what a wife be. What what is the good wife? What is the uh, rule of the wife in a relationship? And she get influenced by all the friend and and I didn't say it as a bad thing because the marriage only lasts uh, two years, but it was a great thing because it was opportunity for me to start learning other thing I didn't know and I start learning. I was like, oh my god! And I even want to teach her in other certain thing and I wish her the best. But it's good for me because it changed my per perspective in a good way. I know about the law. I know the, the about the culture. The American culture. I go deep inside. I do a lot of research, so it's fascinating. So it's not a it's not a curse to me at all. It's a blessing. It was a learning process, and it's, it's something I'm gonna do it again. But it's gonna be done in a different way, much 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 better. But I don't I don't hate nothing of it. Everything is a learning process for me. It's a blessing. So guess, so guess what you just said. So you're just like my husband. He had number one. Did not last very long. But the next one you may meet. Now that you know all those things that you did not know. Now you know all those things. You know what a wife looks like. You know what a man looks like. You know how to cover, protect. Excuse me. You know all that. So your number two will be your number one. Definitely. So guess Definitely. what? I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that so much because that's what, that's what happened. And that woman, she will be your number two. She will be. And it doesn't say anything for, about you. And if she ha if she's a single mom, I don't know. I don't know. It still won't say anything negative about you because you now know what it is that you want. So well, another thing I get blessed to because I know most marriage when they end up is hang hung. Like uh, we end up hating each other. We end up hating each other, and then we fighting. We seen I'm getting lawyer to to hurt you. No, no, no. My process there was no law in, law involved because by the grace of God that. 
she listened and i was trying to explain her the situation the american culture she listened we did this in peace we found a uh, have to hire a lawyer and i got to give the lawyer three thousand dollars the, the lawyer charged me a four hundred dollars every hour in the tough time and i was explaining the situation and she's like you know baby we both poor we ain't gonna give our money to the lawyer so we can't mm -hmm. we don't be together you mad that's fine you can move on your way and she have an older friend give her advice that's okay and it's not really too late because i'm not gonna come back because i know too much now but i wish her the best i give her all the resources i wish her the best we did this really small i didn't take lawyer she didn't take no lawyer we did this really move by the time we go in front of the judge everything we have our parenting all right the parenting plan parental plan everything we're reading everything we're organized i drop my my son in the school in the morning she pick up the son we both involved and the judge yeah, nothing to issue the judge could say okay all right guys so everything is perfect or you got the prior plan who, who pay for the school me who pay for whatever me okay what are you looking for nothing why she's looking for nothing who's working we both working so this thing done in a smooth manner i end up have uh full custody but i tell her even though i have full custody it doesn't mean she cannot have the child anytime she wanted it's just a way for us with it like that to get rid of because i know the court system is not a godly institution as a cushion i want to make it really smooth and the thing was thank god she listened and then she benefit both of us we both save money we didn't take lawyer because the research the last time i did some research to pay a divorce lawyer is to, the cheapest one three thousand dollar deposit and then how much they charge per hour the cheapest one four hundred dollars per hour we, both so you, head, we so, said wow so you all were mature enough to handle your divorce i am on my divorce with no lawyer nothing i write everything down. but what i did i sat i sat down with three lawyers to get the information because i sat down with one lawyer and then she said this is how much i charge i sat, sat down i got free cons consultation 30 minute cons consultation from all three of them one by one i write my information down i compare it i go online i listen to lawyers online too it, it takes some time so i did my uh, my, my due diligence my homework and i view the information i'm like okay okay cool and I ask all three of them is it something that i can do myself if i want do i have to take you to do this they, they said no not really you can do it on your own i said if i do it on my own what information do i need i do i do this thing by myself Wow. I want you to be fair with me and they give you the information i go and do everything by myself so i save myself money and she saved herself money too wow that was outstanding so listen i definitely wish that oh i definitely wish that you find another love you know i do and you gotta let me know when it happens okay oh it's happened i'm, I'm talking to three of them it's already well it's not happened yet i didn't choose one yet but Wait, see, yeah. guys mm -hmm. you say i'm talking to two of them you know, I'm talking to three. Like you know, you, when you're just talking to people, it oh. doesn't mean necessarily. I didn't say, well, you might, you might just. I don't know you yet, but we talking. You know, you're a man. You talk. You gotta talk to people. You talk to girls. One, two, three, four. But it's not like I'm talking to the one. I'm smashing all two of the same time. Not like that. Just talking. You know, going out with and get to know people. You know, I'm, I'm a social person. I don't do that. Uh, stay and, and, and don't talk to nobody. And stay online. I don't need to talk to nobody. I don't need to go out. I, I'm not supposed to meet any woman. No, 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 no. No, everything you talk with a woman you accept yourself i don't do stuff like that no, i believe in people i believe in interaction that's why most people we miss over right now we stay away from each other and yeah. we spend most of our time on the internet we okay. have to interact you know go to church go to a movie go to the park see people you know <laughs> leave the television and the, your home our house become our prison society does of who, who are not married we stress okay. you know right. you know what Danny, you have the energy from I don't know where. Just give me a oh, little. Oh, I got my energy since I was in the belly of my mother. I was born like that. <laughs> All right, Danny. Listen, it's good to see you. Thank you, you know very much. I'm out. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm so at work good. right now. Thank you so much for, for supporting the channel. And I see you on other platforms. And I'm going to look out for you and say hello. Uh, so I'm, I'm supporting you until I die. My respect. I'm out. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <work. laughs> Big Cap. How you doing, Auntie? I'm doing good. How are you? I know, right? I don't never show my face. I be trying to stay up off the hood. I love trolling sometimes, as you can see on other people's uh -oh, channels. Uh-oh, a pretty little girl. I a quick question, though. Like, why I got to be a simp? Because I chose to step up for what the deadbeat didn't do. Why I got to be everything under the book for what this man didn't do? Like, I've been in my stepchild's father. I mean, stepchild's life since she was on before one. 
I've been here the whole time. I've been married to my baby moms for 13 years. We've been together for 16. Our oldest child is 16, which is not mine. So why I got to be the simp and everything else under the book? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, Big Cap. Why you got to be the simp? You why? not? I'm I'm just asking, like, oh, that's, asking that's a me? word that's thrown around everywhere. Why I got to be that? Why I can't be, oh, uh, man, he the one who makes six figures. He's a high-earning man because I do make six figures. It's on the low end of it, but I make it. And I ain't bragging or nothing. I'm a humble person. Brag if you want to know. Listen, I'm valuing you. You're not a simp. No, I, listen, I look, praise to you, my husband, and all the ones like you. You are not a simp. I don't know why men... I don't think women do it. I don't know if women do that or not, but I don't know why men would call another man man in your position a simp. The Russell Wilsons or whomever. I don't know why. Hey, I'm telling you, I'm going to start a whole podcast with that in mind. Like, dude, I, I champion Russell Simmons. I mean, uh, <laughs> Russell Wilson. But it's like, man, we got to be talked down upon and we do the absolute most for your kids. Negro, you stepped away. And don't right. be mad when she called me daddy. You know I don't saying? know. Like, I don't know why that is. It's almost like um, I don't know. It almost sounds like because but this is what they're saying is the, the the definition I got for it was that you're doing so much of the right thing, but the woman that you're doing it for is undeserving. Now I don't know how we can come to those conclusions, but listen, don't you dare listen to that. I mean, even if I that's for still here, we still like y'all can see my ring. I'm still married. We still going. We out on vacation right now. We at the cabins and all this good stuff. We far from home, but I'm out here with your child, and I love that child support card. When y'all make them payments, turn up. Playing with me, bro. But I just want to know why we got to get the title of almost like a deadbeat for stepping in doing what you were supposed to do in the first place. We're going to have That's to, I, whole thing. I would love to have a show about that, but I don't know if it'll go well because I know how men are. Y'all will get the arguing and going on and won't nobody be able to hear the conversation. But that is an excellent question because I, I don't agree with that. You know, I, I think that if a man wants to and signs up to be a stepfather and he does it well, my hat goes off to you. I give you all the praise. I'm saying continue to do what you do. You know, if he's if she's I a good woman. I will. And guess what, though? So, like, when I came into the situation, I didn't have no kids. Thank God I didn't have none because I was raw dogging and all those other fun things that we like to do. And I didn't have no kids before my wife. She came into the picture with a kid and I accepted all of that. So why I got to be the simp and everything else? Like, come on, bro. And how long have you been married? Huh? How long you been married? 13 years. Been together oh for 16 God. Wow. No, 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 no. You are not a simp in any way. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Please <laughs> do. Because I tell you, it be burning me up. I be like, man, come on, bro. Like, there's plenty of things you can call people out here. But, man, come on, man. Because I chose to take care of your kids. And then you got other people trying to be like, well, the stepfather trying to step in and do this and do that. Like, bro, what you think I'm going to do? I'm here. Especially if I have kids with your baby mama. Now my kids calling me daddy all day. What you think your child going to do? They going to naturally say daddy. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you what it is. I never I never started out the relationship saying, hey, you got to call me daddy. No, you call me by my name, first and foremost. And naturally, by me having kids, you're going to call me daddy. It's just not about daddy got it, daddy got it, daddy did this, daddy did that. Guess what? What a God, people at my kids' school think I'm a single parent. They don't even know I have a whole wife. They mama at home. Just they see you so me. much, they think you. <laughs> they think I ain't got no wife. They see the ring, but they be like, is he really married? Do he have any, like, where they mama at? When they mama come to the schools, they, she got to show her ID. <laughs> That's wow. Crazy. They can't listen. You get thumbs up over here. I don't know. I don't know where you go. listen. When you hear people start talking crazy, get up there and say what you got to say. Tell your story. Oh, I love trolling. I like sitting back in the cut trolling because I know it's like 
some things worth saying, some things ain't. But like when you just said that, I was like, man, Auntie, I'm gonna pull up on you. <laughs> no, I didn't say. Who, who, who talking about me? I know you didn't say oh, you was just oh. uh, stating the facts of. Oh yeah. Saying you were simple and everything else, I was just like, man, they would like really be burning me up, and then it'd be questioning, like it'd be questioning guys who did do that. They'd be like, well, shit, maybe I am a simple, maybe I am this, maybe I am that, not knowing, like, bro, you you the better person, and sometimes being a better person hurts another man it's like man that hurts me being a better person i should just be like how your daddy was and just be a deadbeat or a nothing ass person i'm sorry for cursing but i should just be that nothing person and be like i'm gonna just hit it and quit it and keep it moving now y'all want us to mess with mess with or rock with single moms like make the situation better for us too treat me like the king that i am especially if i came in with no kids and if i came in with kids that's a different story but i came speaking for myself i came in with no kids so treat me like the king bro like real tough and you know what you are and especially if your wife is treating you like that if she's put you in that position and you're covering them and you're happy with your situation you cannot let somebody talk against that you can't do it you can't you can't don't even worry about it saying because it doesn't even matter it's all i don't i look past that it's like man dude i ain't worried about it as long as her baby daddy stay in his place bro i'm straight because at the end of the day if it was to pop off two people gonna be hurt either i'm gonna be hurt he gonna be hurt and the child is gonna be hurt and i i believe in self-preservation i'm gonna hurt him before i let him hurt me and then in turn that's gonna hurt your child y'all gotta think about that too it's like bro you'll hurt that child if you take her father out of here bro like y'all gotta like really think about stuff like that people don't be thinking i believe in self first I don't know. I don't know. I really want to get to the bottom of that to see um, what is the problem with that. Why would somebody I mean, but again, I want men to respect each other. If you've made a decision that you're happy with, you've been married for 13 years. That's a long yep. time. I can't take it. it. Is. For real, bro. we've been married for 13 years. My wife met me. I was on a bus stop and going to get a job. Yes, I was the Pookie and Ray Ray. I was on the bus stop going to get a job. She was coming from college. She was coming from school. We met each other there and built from there. Life change. Life happens for those who don't know. Life be life. Life changed, but now I'm the breadwinner of our household. So, yes, she works for me. Six figure, low, low side of six figures, but I'm proud of it. Can't nobody take that from me. Coming from where I came from, guess what? My wife works for me now with the college degree. Yes, turn up. <laughs> <laughs> you seem very happy too. So I, <laughs> I am. Can't nobody take nothing from me, not even her baby daddy. And he don't like me for what? Because I take care of your child. Come on, bro. If you look, if you loved it that much, bro, you should have stayed and did what you were supposed to do. Wow. I would have gladly wow. moved out the way because I didn't have no kids. I didn't have nothing going for myself. I would have gladly moved out the way, but you didn't. So I stepped up, did what I had to do, which in turn, this unit right here made me a better person. And I can accept that. This unit that's made cool. me better. That's, that's an excellent right. story. Listen, that's a good story right there because that's that's what's supposed to happen. You know, you, you can't stay wrong all your life. Your wife, your wife couldn't stay in a wrong position all her life and you couldn't stay in a pooky position all your life. So y'all oh, help and you build y'all build together and you, you're the man you're, and you're taking pride in that. Hey, shoot. Mm. Whole house, three cars, a whole house, three cars, all that good stuff. All for me. Of course, she played her part too. I can't take no credit from her. She did her part too. But lately for the past what, three, four years, it's been me. Man, I'm telling you, man, people got it crazy out here. And y'all talk bad about people who do stuff like this. How y'all want the community, but y'all down in the people that's even trying to help the community. Wow. I'm so glad that you cammed up today. This is a lot. I'm glad to meet I you, too. I'm out here in the cabins with my family. Look, I'll tell you no lie. I got my girls right here. They eating hot funyuns and chips. And I'm drinking. We out here kicking it. But you mad at me for stepping up doing your part. You should have been the daddy that you was supposed to, that you wanted to be or tried to be. Come on, bro. I don't give nobody no slack, no excuses. If I can do it, you can do it. If you knew my story, you would say, man, that's crazy. You did that? Yes, that's me. And I, I love trolling. I promise you, I'll be in everybody chats trolling like crazy. But I know the real stuff when it's time to be real. And this right here, if y'all can see it, that's real. 
That's what's real. She the said, in the house. The oldest is in the house. We out here in the cabins, bro. It is peaceful out here. What's up to everybody in the chats? I see y'all chatting it up in here, but I'm going to hop off until y'all just wanted to hop on real quick, show my respect, say what's up, and the little simp thing, that like really be burning my gills up. Like, dang, dude, you can't do nothing nice in the world, but y'all want people to step up to the plate for the community and protect this, protect that, do this, do that. How? When you down in the good man, they do it. Wow. Well, you won't hear me down in you, and it's so good to meet you. And you got to come and um, you got to sneak up again sometime when you see me somewhere chatting it up. <laughs> Always. I'm waiting on that C8 to come available. I might buy that. Uh, no, no, no. You don't need any kids for a C8. <laughs> You're right. Tell listen, me about it. listen, I'll do my next um, I'll do my next show in the C8 and then you can ride down the street with me. <laughs> you better know it. Y'all take care. I'm going to finish listening. I'm going to hop up off of here. Thank you so much. Listen, y'all have fun. Have yeah. fun. All right, thanks. Bye. All right, bye. Gretchen. Gretchen, you in that Wi Fi? How you doing? How you doing? No. <laughs> Gretchen, you know what, Gretchen? I'm going to have to tell you to go sit on the porch somewhere and we can have a conversation because I want to catch up with you, but your Wi Fi does not work well in the house. Mr. Robinson, Edward Robinson, security boss. Why are you smiling and laughing? <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for being here. So listen, guys, the link is in the chat. If I have someone else that wants to um, cam up and tell their, you know, give us a point, let us know why individuals are simp that do good things or what have you, or tell us what they feel about single moms and, and being number two or what have you. Because again, there's nothing wrong with that. If it's an organic relationship and the man has found what he was looking for in the woman with the child, let him have his preference. Let's stop disrespecting each other, women and women against women and men against men and vice versa. And I saw earlier and Haley, I know you probably don't want to come up, but I definitely want to talk about this trust issue so much more because um, I want to talk about the trust. We need to talk about the trust because we need to trust each other, I guess, to some degree. But again, if it's if, if we're holding against one another the past, then we got to really work through that some type of way. If it's therapy that we need, then that's need, but that needs to be what we do. But we can't hold men against, excuse me, we can't hold things against men present day for something somebody else did to us. Our daddy, our past girl, boyfriends or what have you. And the same for women. You can't hold things against. We can't say that all women are this way. All women are that way. All women do this. All women are that. We can't do that. We have to stop doing that. We got to stop doing that and try to build relationships. And like this young man just said, Big Cap, I'm so glad you came up. I mean, we've been talking back and forth for, oh gosh, almost a year now. And it's so good to finally see you. I had no idea you were married, had kids or any of that, but I'm glad to see that you are a family man, married 13 years and you're doing your thing. Wow. That's so wonderful to hear, guys. That is so good to hear. And I just wish that most more of you would um, not necessarily do what Big Cap did, but fine. I hope most of you can find marriage or find love in marriage. Because remember, Security Boss is always pushing the nuclear family because I just believe that that's the answer. And we're going to have to get to the bottom of these, um, you know, these these talking points and these terms and these things that were being said about each other. Or we can talk about it, you know, because you want people to make their own decisions about what they want to do. Excuse me. And, and we can't, um, you know, and respect e each other's decisions about what we've done. So um, if we, we got anybody male. 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 Yeah. Hello. Oh, there you go. How are you, sir? I'm, uh, how you doing? How you doing? I'm doing good. How you? What you think about this, Mel? Uh, I never thought Russell was a simp because um, he's getting what he's getting what he wants in return. A uh, Mel, get a little closer to your mic. We can't hardly hear you, sir. Can you hear me clear? Yeah, you better now. Yeah, um, he's getting what he wants in return. That's right. Yeah, I mean, they, they twist a lot of what definition of a simp is. Simp is, a simp is a person, and it could be a man or a woman that could be a simp, that um, shows affection, um, changes his or her beliefs and needs, and tries to get reciprocation from a person that don't like them. That's not returning the way that they want in favor. 
that, that tell me what a simp is and stuff. And there's a lot of added nuances that was added to that, some behavior and stuff like that. And it got so twisted that, yeah, it lost its original definition. But it's, that's what telling me a simp is. Like, you know, a person who's not returning um, their fe- affections, you know, when it comes to love or, or sexual, or whatever, and return for what they want. Telling you you're, you're doing stuff for someone that don't like you and stuff the way you want to be liked. So, you know, Russell Wilson is a simp? No, he's not because... He got what he want in return. Now you may not agree with the type of woman that you know he's doing it with, but unfortunately, that type of woman is showing in return the way he wants it. I mean, she she's showing affection and everything the way he wants it and everything. Yeah, so he's getting what he wanted in return, despite she came in a package. But he will, he will, he was willing to accept that, and she respected him for that, and she's showing him more appreciation for that. Unlike you know, we I think they take certain nuances what happens. Well, other guys that didn't get what they return, dealing with single mothers and everything, and think every single mother's the same way. Now, I've dated a single mother. I think I told you last night on another show and stuff like that. She's not a Sierra. I didn't get what I want to return from her and stuff. But I'm not going to hold every single mother on the same, you know what I'm saying, line like that and everything. Like I said last night, yeah, I made 90%. I am focused on women with no kids, but... You know, if I do deal with a single mother that mm-hmm. I have a little bit more higher demands, she got to have one kid. And I kind of rather deal with a woman that has a son instead of a daughter and stuff. Yeah, like, you know, if I do want, decide to want to spare my options for women with kids, she got to only have one kid. And I got to see what type of woman she is. I don't even like to know as far as what type of child's father he is and, you know, why the relationship broke up the way it is. So, you know, because that was tell, sort of tell what type of woman she is and everything was it if it was in the marriage and everything and you have divorce and depend on for their divorces and stuff like that so yeah you know all right mel thank you so much for that mel you know what when you gonna get your camera buddy yeah, anytime soon man i'll just start it back to work <laughs> all right all right who knows you might you might be blessed with one sometime soon who knows who knows <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. i don't want to bring up did you ever seen that interview with um lauren london and angie martinez no someone just mentioned it a minute ago that's, and that's what i really want to bring up real quick yeah, oh, oh um, wait, go ahead no go ahead because somebody yeah. mentioned it in the chat a little bit yeah, about it. I a situation like that if you see that interview you see how highly um you know she spoke highly of her, of her late ex-husband you know lindsey also the way she did and it's like it was so much on the spiritual platform and everything I give a point for this. Like she said herself, I have to put my ego aside, you know, for our relationship to work because sometimes we rinse our egos. That's how, you know, things don't work out. But the way she was speaking of it, it's like, hey, here's my thing and stuff. A woman like that, that any man out there I wanted to get with her, a type of woman like that, he got to know that's sort of like a, 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 a still wall that's hard to crack because she already – felt like she had a love on so much on high pedestal the way she is and despite a tragedy that happened that broke him up and stuff like that when she speaks highly of him that's gonna be hard for the crap for the next guy that wants to try to take a chance on her and stuff it's like she made up her mind like you know I, I don't think she wants to be in another relationship again and everything like I feel like I have my time and I think some guys might feel like you know they t- was trying to court a girl like that and he gets advice from his friends they'll keep trying to lay the you gotta be patient. You gotta be patient. But honestly, me, I don't think I'd give advice for a woman, I mean, a guy like that, for a woman like that, because it's like, it, it, it's, it's. I'm not saying she was a bad woman, but it's like when you try, yep, definitely gonna be number two. She has a decision. She already made a decision that it so it seemed like she already felt like she don't want to move on from there, like you know, or she, a woman like that take, takes a real long, long, long time to try to move on. I, that's that right now i guess she's just focused on her son and try to be as spiritual as she can you know you know well christianity religion and everything so that's like a hard water crack for women like that and stuff i would like to know your point of view for something like that you know? i need to watch that i need to take a look at that mail and see what yeah. i think about it before i say anything but listen I, i'll send you the link in another chat yeah i'll look for a single link in the chat um, okay so listen thank you so much for um what you do and we appreciate your support Definitely. And continue doing the modding for us, and we appreciate you. Definitely. Take care, y'all. Thank you, Mr. Edward. How you doing, security boss? 
Can I'm you hear doing me? well. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for asking. So tell me something. You've been, how much of this have you heard today? I just uh, came in. So I've heard about uh, five to 10 minutes. I heard, um, I heard that you were talking uh, right before uh, Mel came on, um, explaining how we have to stop pretty much uh, getting emotional and kind of blaming each other and uh, <laughs> shaming uh, men. Well, in particular, um, what, what it made me think of was men shaming other men who have found some type of happiness, who, you know, maybe are giving uh, to someone with children or willing to take someone in who has uh, children or has responsibilities. And the person here who has no one is saying, how are you going to do that? You know, what you doing? You know, she's just going to leave, you know, putting negativity into that. So that is what I heard. Um, I've only been here for the past uh, five to 10 minutes. Um, but I think that that happens a lot. You know, once once people start using the language of they and them and uh, they always do this, um, I think that we can kind of forget how um, like the I believe the the description said there are uh, good women. There are uh, good men, um, but sometimes we can um, fail to see that. And a lot of it comes from fear. A lot of it comes from past experiences and not realizing, you know, from the premise, you know, I've, I've heard you security boss and I hope I'm not, you know, talking uh, too long, but I've heard about um, your beliefs and, um, you know, as far as religion goes. And one thing that I was reading today was about, and something that I try to do um, is just try to treat your neighbor as yourself. That is a principle. But for those who are not religious, just to, um, you know, give somebody a fair shot, just the same way that you would want a fair shot. And I think that we kind of don't do that because and I've, I'm guilty of it, too. You watch too many videos. So you can these look at this video. It is craziness. Look at this video, of that craziness. And it can start to affect you. So I think um, we need to give each other a chance, you know, and as far as men, you know, we kind of want to see results right away. You know, we want to know that our investment is not in vain, you know, whether it be time, whether it be money. Do you really like me? Do you really care? And um, I think that's sometimes that's the wrong way to go about it. You know, um, looking for, you know, instead of, you know, looking to, you know, enjoy the moment, you know, for what it is. And um, if you wind up getting married and having a wonderful life, that's wonderful. If she does you wrong, just keep it moving. And I think it's hard for a lot of people um, to do that. And um, unrealistic expectations combined with past trauma, combined with um, red pill videos or any other kind of videos. I, I forgot the word that, that um, it, the, the word for it, but, oh, well, you kind of can live in a bubble where you know, if you have Google or YouTube or, or any of those, you only see the videos that um, mirror your beliefs. So right. if you believe that women or as um, far as men, if you believe women ain't this, women ain't that, that's all you're going to see. Wow. You're talking about like an echo chamber situation. Exactly. Thank you. An echo chamber. <laughs> and that's not real life, you know, as far as my experience and um, sometimes we get here and we forget that there are real people out here and um, not everybody's bad. Edward, that is so important what you've just said. Um, I appreciate it a lot because um, there is something very, uh, there is no organicness about YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's missing. Everything is somewhat scripted. The instructions are there for you. All you have to do is follow it. If it doesn't fit the script, it's not correct. There's no thought, press that, 
thought process that goes into much of anything. And over here at SB Nation, I'm totally different <laughs> because I did everything wrong in the beginning. And I'm telling you how I got it right. And it doesn't really fit a mode of any kind. It's just that you get it right. And however you, whatever you got to do to pursue to do that legally, of course, is what you do. Um, and that man may not fit that perfect mode, but if he's willing, let's yeah. work with him. That woman, she may not fit that perfect mode, but if she's willing, let's work with her. Because the reality of it is not too many of us were given the correct information and don't have examples. <laughs> just, just keep it all the way real. Dearly beloved. <laughs> We were not taught. We were not taught and we don't have good examples. So instead of it, us keeping with what we've seen and what we grew up in, the example is out there and there is a book that tells you exactly how to do it. But are you going to pick it up and follow it? So me, I just try to be the example and try to throw a little bit of information out there because it gives us more than what we had before. Then you have to make a decision on what fits you and what's real. And then we have to add what really works. Because not all the information that we get in these uh, YouTube spaces is bad, but it's some, this is not practical. You know, when you're talking about relationships, there has to be something that's organic towards it. Oh, it won't work. Uh, once those things that you checked off the box initially, once they wear out or uh, once your needs change, and then that second portion of your life, you're here like five year in, now you're ready for something different. You know, you didn't check that box, that five year box. Now <laughs> she has none of those things <laughs> or he has none of those things. Now, what's going to take you between to five from year five to year 10? It's like, ah, guess what? You didn't even really like her. Or you didn't she didn't really even like you. Now what? What's going to get us from five to 10? It's not there. So we just got to continue to, uh, like you say, well, you didn't say it, but I'm going to say it. we got to be independent thinkers. We can't allow the negativity to always get into our heads and penetrate all our thoughts about everybody, you know, because I even get it. I'm a married woman. I don't have a, a sexual marketplace value, but sometimes I go in place. I have men talking to me like I want them. I'm like, huh? <laughs> you know, this shouldn't be the conversation that we're having right now. <laughs> Why? Exactly. I don't want you know, so you can tell that it's kind of taken over. But, you know, you just, the only thing you can do is give the information. And I appreciate you for recognizing where you are and what's going on. So continue to do so. And definitely we welcome you over here at SB Nation. And thank you for being here. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Thank you, thank security you. boss. Thanks. So listen, um, I saw a couple of more people trying to cam, uh, cam up and come up. I appreciate you. If you want to do that before we leave today, make sure you do so. Um, type in, I think it was you. Let me just say something to you guys. Um, Y'all know I have a co-host. My co-host is Mr. Boss. Mr. Boss makes the decision on how we actually do the production of the show. We ask everyone to come up because a lot of the shows that we do, we actually clip portions and we put out as shorts. And it doesn't look really good when you have an avatar or a blank spot there to um, do a clip. So we ask everyone to come up for a couple of reasons. We actually come up in the back so we can make sure you're the individual that you say you are and not a nude pick or a ridiculous pick <laughs> how about that not a nude pick or a ridiculous pick because it was so many times that um we know some other panels who have been hit from things in the back porn straight porn stuff that's not it's not worthy of the you know the platform we first we want a award against that so there you make it you tell us who you are and then from there, we want to again like I said we want people to cam up because we often want to use um these these moments that we have is because that moment that, that Mr. Airwood and I have was a good moment. I'm sure Mr. Boss is clicking right now on 10, like, hmm, I might need to clip that. Now that clip would be very well because Edward is a person and I'm talking, he's talking to me. And then there was one, two with um, Big Cap. He was a person and he was expressing himself to me, which is very important. I like what he said. So those things are individual shorts. And I'm explaining to this because I explaining this to you all because I care. I care what you all think and what you leave here with. Cause we're genuine over here. We five stars and that's how we do it. Um, so that's the reason why we asked you to come up because you never know when you're going to see yourself on, what is it? TikTok, uh, Instagram, somewhere else in a short with just me and you talking. So that's the reason why we do it. And I appreciate you all for understanding that. Thank you guys. This, this has been an outstanding show, but let me tell you this really quick. 
tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern Time here on Unsolicited. Modern Renaissance Man and myself, we are having a conversation and we're talking about all things, if not everything. I want you all to be here. I need y'all support. I would love for you all to be here. And I thank you so much for being here tonight. And um, I'm going to see y'all tomorrow. Chat, y'all did an outstanding job. Guys, when you come in to live, make sure you give me the thumbs up if you haven't already. Again, we're really, really close to 4,000 subscribers. Make sure if you have not subscribed to the channel that you do that. I appreciate you. Listen. But Today I was a good day because I got another family. definition of a simp. I've met a man that I did not know. Cap, big cap, listen, I appreciate you so much for coming up. And this is excellent. I feel like I'm getting closer and closer to y'all. Y'all still five stars. Welcome to SB Nation and thank you for being here. Have a good night. You want the love? I don't got it. You screaming, stay, please don't go. Don't think it's in me to listen to foe. It's so different with distance we roam in the zones where nothing get hurt anymore. I just wish I was home when I stepped through front door. But instead, I'm alone and completely unsure. And even though he's screaming out with the best of intentions, I don't get it. Why do you always gotta ask me to stay? Why you always gotta go? Playing house, this ain't a home with your soul on the road. Say, why you always gotta go? Playing house, this ain't a home with your soul on the road. See, I've been lost in my thoughts, and my thoughts ain't too scared to usher off. Sorry, Mom, I just thought you were my world. Now you're not. And I'm just sitting, smoking, sloping in the days Cause my days ain't been the same since I drove here I remember the way you wrote letters in blue ink You and me was in love Come up, what your crew think? I know your moms probably think I'm a bastard Your pops probably wanna beat my to death and take up in my casket But I got sick of fighting, bickering, fussing Over nothing, cussing Instead of and watching the death of discussions that we once had Days that we once spent in the backseat of our cars We were poets at sunset It's funny how love can fall out the foreground Get pushed into the back of your mind We used to twist the spliff and laugh and relax Are you crying? And I'm trying to find the reason So I ask, does forever ever happen? Or is it always fade to black? I can't stay No, I always gotta go Playing house to stay home with my soul on the road. I can't stay. No, I always gotta go. Playing house to stay home with my soul on the road.